Welcome back. We are going to work on the project one last time. So what we're going to do here is um, the last thing that we had done was we was tr we were trying to upgrade the uh, the code from the uh, CDN version uh, from the online version right to a local version and that's where we got stumped so we'll take it from there and we've got an answer to get that working so uh, I'm gonna open up my project I've named it October 2nd and I'll go into my mobile website so if you copied my project from the folder you should see that we've got these files thank you we've got these files this is where I ended up with last time I've already downloaded the the CSS and JavaScript files, the latest versions, 1.4.4, unless there's 1.4.5, I haven't looked today, and uh, jQuery 2.1.0. And what seems to have happened with a little bit of research was that uh, we were using deprecated code. We were using code that the developers are saying, well, this is kind of old, this is the new and much better way. So the code, the, the way we were making that uh, about box pop up is deprecated. Now, to my knowledge, what I had read was that that was not going to be um, removed until like version 1.5. So maybe they sped up the timetable and now it's in 1.4.4. What we had written and worked previously doesn't quite work anymore. We'll change it right now. But uh, here's, our, here's our project so far and uh, I'm going to open the index file. Go ahead and open your index file, and we will set our our lines of code. We will set our lines of code again, 13, 19, and 20, to the latest versions of the code. And then what we need to do is change the behavior that makes the dialog box pop up. So we'll start with line 13. We'll change that. Your line 13, change the H href to 1.4.4 CSS. So make sure it only points to the CSS file, the local CSS file. Now, did anyone else? look into this about why maybe it didn't work. I know a lot of people are curious. Did anyone else look into it? Or, 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 you, or you thought, uh, Victor will figure it out. Okay. So, uh, uh, actually, I didn't figure it out. Uh, Kira figured it out over here. So we'll, we'll get it working in a moment. Uh, so let's uh, then change line 20. Line 20 also should say jQuery Mobile 1.4.4. And number 19 should say jQuery 2.1.1. So change those three lines again. And the behavior that we found was that when we tested this on some web browsers it worked and in others it didn't. I'm going to look at it one more time in Firefox. And the point is I'm trying to make that, that About button work as it always did and if I click it, it doesn't work. So we're going to fix that. What's going on here again is that this is code that used to work, and for whatever reason, I'm sure we can read why in the blog or the release notes or something. There's some explanation that what used to work doesn't work anymore, and now we have to do it in a different way. So obviously to get the best um, answer would be at the horse, straight from the horse's mouth. So I'm going to see if I can find the particular screen that says what the change or why the change is. I'm going to take a quick look at jQuerymobile.com. I want to go look at um, demos. 
jQuery 1.4.4. And I suppose this would be related to pages and navigation. I'm going to look under pages. Uh, actually, Akira, where do you, how did you? All right, we'll see here. So under pages, I'm sure somewhere it'll talk about creating a dialog box. What's that? Dialogue, maybe? Well, let me see here. Pop up. Data roll pop up. Well, here's something, just stumbling upon it. This is kind of cool. Uh, pop-up is, uh, with the data roll of pop-up, you click something and it creates this little pop-up, like for more information, so that it doesn't show you a whole large screen of content, maybe just one little sentence or paragraph. We have data roll of pop-up. Yes? The, the part that's not working is when we click on the, on the button, mm -hmm. the dock button, which is just... Uh, an A tab, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, that that button. It's under button. Oh, under button. Okay, that uh, that is a that is a button right here. It was originally just a text link, an H, an A tag, but now, what's happening? And we'll see exactly in a moment here. The code that used to make that dialog box behavior appear has been changed. So even though it's in an HTML. Tag. It's some jQuery. Yes, because jQuery. Used, it's a jQuery parameter. Yes, wow. it's it's taking the default behavior of. It's taking the the default behavior of clicking a, a a link and taking you to a full page, full screen page, and changing the behavior for it to be like a like a pop up screen, and that is via jQuery mobile. We could, but most likely it's not that kind of error. I don't know if the debugger will be smart enough to know you're using deprecated code because we're writing jQuery mobile code and perhaps the debugger only knows basic JavaScript. So we'll look in a moment, but it should be somewhere here uh, under button. You have to click pages on the left. Pages. Okay. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you have the menu, and then you have the dialog page there. Oh, dialog page. Okay. But then when you click it, it goes away on the side. So. Well, as long as we find it. Any page can be represented as a modal dialog that appears to be suspended above the page by adding an attribute to the link that leads to the dialog page. Note, the dialog widget is deprecated in 1.4 and will be removed in 1.5. The page widget now has the dialog option, which, when set to true, will apply dialog styling to a page. So I'm sure there's an exact, oh, here it is here, di data dialog true. So any page can be presented as a modal dialog by adding data dialog true attribute to the page. OK, so here's what we need to do. In our code, we need to find that About button, which is on line 66. And the old way is that we have data rel dialog attached to the button. And I can see the logic now of instead changing it that the burden of it being a dialog box falls on the page itself. That way, you go to the page and all its properties show up there and you see data dialog true. Here, we might not know this way, we might not know that the, that the page that is opening is going to be a dialog box unless we hunt down where it was coming from, the link. 
So on line 66, we're going to change our code. We're going to completely remove the data rel dialog. That's what's deprecated. That's what's uh, no longer cool in jQuery mobile and version 1.5. So we'll remove that data rel dial dialog. Remove that completely. Line 66. And then we'll go all the way to the end of the document where we've got our um, our about screen, line 30, 232. And so, so the documentation is saying, Uh, that the page itself, when the dialog attribute is applied, the framework adds style to add rounded corners, margins, and a dark background. By default, the framework will also add a close button if the dialog has a header. All right, so we're saying add data dialog equals true to attribute to the page. So I assume that means back here on line 232, um, just my, my styling is that I leave the ID as the last attribute in the div. So probably doesn't matter, but I'm going to put it after data role of page. Actually, probably no data role of page. Well, we'll see which. We'll see that. So I'm going to leave data role page and data dialog true. And there's my, my ID of about. Save that and run it. Icon? The little X icon? Yeah, no, I still I still left it. I left it as is because the concept of it is still that it's that info screen. So data dialog true. I'm gonna run it in um, Firefox. Click it and it opens. All right, so I'm going to click it, and it opens. And it's got the little close button as normal. Yes? I see some other background. You mean in the documentation? No, on, on this thing on the top of screen. Background? Yeah, it looks like it's in the I don't see it. What, what, what do you see? Um, did you remove did you remove the uh, the extra on line 66 did you remove the original data dialog or data rel dialog just to show you here again line 66 your href there should not have the data rel dialog anymore by removing that? Okay, so try that, BJ. Try to remove. If you've still got it, it does not, it does no longer need, the button itself no longer needs data rel dialog. Now the burden of it becoming a dialog box falls on the page itself, not on the button. Easy fix when you know what it is. Yes. When you read the documentation. So whenever you have time, you know, curl up by the fireplace, take out the, the jQuery mobile documentation, and read up on it. Read up on it, yeah. That's something I do every evening. <laughs> Okay, so then at that point, the um, the the project is working as it used to. It's now relying on the local version of the jQuery and jQuery mobile code. Question. My name doesn't Yours what? My name uh -huh. doesn't. Well, under what conditions? Well. 
I have it right now. If I close it out and I go back to it, my name will not be there. All right, let me try it. I'm going to add my I'm name. That way for a couple of classes. But it's kind of almost intermittent. I think we had talked about that Firefox deletes your local history. You mean it just generically or in this? In this classroom, which is all the browsers are set to the browser. That makes sense. I know what you're saying. So, never yeah, I think we're doing it right. I think just that that uh, the particular protections that we've got set up here, perhaps not in Chrome, because I did fully exit and restart it, but I think in Firefox we've got our setting for this lab or this campus that it forgets your history just for uh, privacy reasons. How about in Internet Explorer? Uh, yeah, sure. One thing that I do notice is that it pops up with an already filled in undefined yeah. in there. I think we had also talked about this. Someone had mentioned that um, that perhaps also the um, the, per, the the settings of um, of Internet Explorer are a little too restrictive uh, on our computers. But again, uh, I think a lot of this also has to do with the um, the fact that we're running on a local connection instead of online or in the app. So if it doesn't quite work on Internet Explorer, that's fine because again, remember, um, we're eventually going to end up with an app. And uh, I'm happy with it so far, but this is the beta testing that we would do, and we would probably have to read up on some documentation about what's going on exactly in Internet Explorer. I would love to put it on a web server and then test it from the web server and see what would happen there. Mine at home comes out as one long page. Now, here it wasn't doing that, but when I open the Internet Explorer at home, it's just one long page. Oh, really? Nothing, the buttons are gone. It's Totally what version of Internet Explorer do you I have? I don't know. It could be older. That, that could be it, yeah. Could very well be older because I don't use Internet Explorer much at all, so I don't keep up with updates or anything. <clears throat> uh, all right, then, so. so um, what I want to look at also is, uh, speaking of uh, updated code, deprecated code and such, uh, I want to look at something that I myself haven't had a lot of um, experience with that I'd like to see how this works too. There's a new, uh, there's a relatively new feature in uh, jQuery Mobile which allows for a, a side panel to open up. You've probably seen this behavior on your apps where you've got your main screen, you tap a button, and a, and a little like drawer slides open from the left side or the right side of the screen, and it reveals like you know a quarter of the size of the screen or half or something, a little bit of content there. Uh, jQuery Mobile has that as well, so it, it'll feel even more app-like. So I want to look at how that is set up, and I'm going to try it. Like I said, I haven't actually tried it, so this will be something live that we can do, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to go back to jQueryMobile.com. I'll look at the demos. And the thing is about finding where it's at. I'm sure it's got a specific name. Panel. Panel. 
panel widget. I think this is it. Yep, this is it. All right, look at look at this uh, demo right here. If you go under, if you go to the demos and you look and you click on panels, panel widget, and then panel. Uh, here's examples from the left or the right. So on the left we've got overlay. If you click it, notice a panel slides into view. Close. Open close. There's reveal. Look at the different behavior here. Notice how the whole screen slides over for a moment. That's reveal. Then we got push. That is very much like reveal except that also the panel moves at the same time. It's very subtle. Watch again. Reveal. It's like the that side panel is already there and then the top level moves up to, to the side. And then with push, everything moves over. So I kind of like both overlay and reveal behavior, although this one seems to be what I see a little bit more often in apps, I think. So I want to see how this one works. Flexible by design, panels can be used for navigation, forms, inspectors, and more. The position of the panel on the, le on the screen is set by the data position attribute. The default value is left, meaning it appears on the left. Specify data position right to appear on the right. The display mode of the panel is set by data display attribute. The value of the attribute defaults to reveal. Okay, meaning the panel will sit under the page and reveal as the page slides away. Specify overlay or push. All right, where panel markup goes in the markup. The panel must be a sibling to the header, content, and footer elements inside a jQuery mobile page. So it looks like we add this within a page, not its own separate page. You can add the panel markup either before or after these elements, but not in between. <sighs> All right, so it has to be header, content, footer, panel, or panel, and then header, content, footer. A panel cannot be placed outside a page, but this constraint will be removed in a future version. Here's an example of the panel before the header, content, and footer. Div data role page, div data role panel, ID my panel, content goes here, and then the header, content, and footer. Okay, so this is new. We haven't really done this. This is going to be a new type of element inside of an existing element. So we're going to have a data role of page, and then within the page, a data role of panel, and then it's content. Alternatively, it's possible to add the panel markup after the header, content and footer, in the source, just before the end of the page container. So suppose that means it could also go here, before the end of the page. Where in, the, where in the source order you place the panel markup will depend on how you want the page content to read for people experiencing the page on a C-grade device or for a screen reader. With that saying, and we didn't really touch on it, but there's three levels, I think maybe four, three levels of, um, of compatibility of jQuery mobile, A level, B level, C level, maybe another one, which is that if if uh, jQuery mobile is, is A grade, it means it works perfectly on the particular device. So let's say Android operating system version 2.1 and up is A grade. But maybe between uh, Android 1.5 and 2.0, it's a B grade, that it doesn't quite work, the animations are weird, and then C grade is that it's even worse result, that it might not even work. And that's why it's saying that if you place this before or after your content, if a person has a screen reader, it'll, sh it'll display that content before or after your main content. All right, so we'll try this in a moment. It seems pretty straightforward, but... Of course, I want to continue reading here. Panels outside pages. If you want to use the same panel on multiple pages, you can place the markup outside the page. See external panels. All right, we might look at that. And with dynamic content, you can do this with some jQuery based on a trigger. 
update and layout, opening the panel to control a panel from a link, set the href to the ID of the panel. This instructs, well, that's the same as before. Okay, so that seems the same as before. When we actually want to open it, it's going to be a link with the href to the ID of that panel. So that's the same as before. Closing the panel, panel animations. Oh, we can do a little bit of animation here, I guess. Positioning, styling. Well, we'll do the most basic one. We'll see how it works. So we need to decide what um, would be an appropriate screen where a side panel makes sense. I suppose any, any of these screens will work, but... Um, you mean instead of a dialogue? That's going to need for us to rewrite, rewrite a, a fair amount of code, perhaps. So, and also, I, I don't know. Th this, this works well with this larger sized screen, and it seems that the dialog, the panel doesn't display a whole large size. Let me see what happens if we go to a size like our, like our app, something like that. What does it look like? The overlay. Takes over a fair amount of the space. Maybe I need the whole space. We might do that uh, after we see how well it goes, just doing it basically. But uh, I'm going to say, what other content can we display? Maybe here. Maybe the description of the classes. Well, we've already got it inside of the inside of this collapsible element. Let's say just uh, to set this up here in the in this art screen. Let's say we we're going to have a a calendar of events of art shows of, of art exhibits. So maybe we can say uh, you know art calendar. Click it and then it slides open to show us a, a simple calendar of of events that are happening. Let's try that. So this is going to be in the art classes screen. Starting on line 76. So basically, the documentation says, uh, the, the, the example says we can add a new div before the data role of header. We'll try it that way. I would personally put it after words, but we'll do it the way the example says first. So I'm going to make a new line after, on line 77 and make a div pair right there. And so that needs a data role a panel and an ID so we can link to it. I'll call it art calendar, art cal. Capital C, art cal. Since I'm not sure exactly how it's going to look, I'm just going to put some filler text. Seems that's all we need. We just need a, a new div, data role, panel with an ID, some content. 
Yeah. What's that? How do you click the list? We're gonna make a button at the at the at the end of the screen that says uh, calend art calendar. So as soon as as long as we've got this, that's part one. We need the page. Part two is the trigger, the button. So we're gonna scroll down into the content area on line one forty two. We've already got a button there that opens the the classes on online. So I'm going to add a new line on line 143 and also make a a button there. I'll call this art calendar. Set our href in a moment, but uh, data roll button. And the documentation should sim simply be a reference to the IDs, to the ID. So that was sh uh, pound art cal. We'll add a button and such and inline and all of that in a moment. I just want to see if this works so far. This is on line Huh. I think, uh, well, that was, uh, if we give it a header, I think. Let me see it for myself. So, over on the art screen, art calendar, click it. Okay, cool. Loads up there to dismiss it. I believe it said if we give it a header, it'll give it a little close box, but let's check. That works, but it's, it might be a small target area to click on. You know, a person's... How many times have you realized your finger's bigger than you thought when you're clicking on something on your smartphone? So we should be able to get a close button. Let's see here. It's cool that they do let it that uh, just by simply clicking outside of it, it closes it. But sometimes, you know, it's, it's good to, uh, to give more options. So here it is, closing a panel. There's a huge section on it. Uh, clicking the link that opened the panel, swiping left or right, or tapping the escape key will close the panel. Well, there's no escape key on a mobile device, but okay. Um, so clicking the link that opened the panel, swiping left or right. Okay. You can put a button and just run that. Turn off the swipe to close behavior, add the data swipe close false. By default, the panel can also be closed by clicking outside to prevent this behavior. Data dismissible false. Okay. It's common to also add a close button inside the panel. To add the link that will close the panel, add data rel close attribute to tell the framework to close the panel when clicked. It's important to ensure that this link also makes sense if JavaScript isn't available. So we recommend that the href point to the ID of the page to which the user should jump when closing. For example, if the button to open the panel is in the header bar that has an ID of my header, the close link in the panel should be that. <coughs> All right, so it's just um, I'm just going to borrow that code. So it's a simple link. Data rel close.
Uh, so I'm going to put it in line 80 for the moment, make it prettier in just a bit. The href here should be set back to uh, art because this is saying when you close this panel it takes you to the screen of art where we came from. I'm curious, are we able to add yeah, exactly, a, a, a header, just so that we have a close box at the top. One little slash. That looks pretty weird, but um, yeah. Yeah, making the button, uh, making it close. But what I mean is that what's weird about it is that the, I'm going to make it into a button in a moment just to see what it looks like. But notice that the header doesn't extend to the whole, to all the edges, and there's a gap at the top and on the sides. So that would require some CSS to get that under control. So perhaps you're not supposed to have a header in a panel. <laughs> Maybe that's the blue part behind it. What happens if you take the, uh, the link? The close panel thing Let's see. So what, it, what what's appearing there is what I created here, which is a, a new data role of header. So the, the behavior is that it's not extending all the way to the edge, but I want to try this right here. Button, uh, data role button. Data. What is it again? Uh, yeah, data, icon, pause, uh, no text, and data, icon, um, is it close or exit or something? Uh, the one I do remember is edit. If someone could look up what's the little X icon. So if we if we delineate it just to just to that So at the moment now it's just a matter of figuring out what sort of styling we want. So 
anything should work. And so let's say at that point that it works. Did it work for everyone? Anyone need some help? Okay, let me put my code up right here. There's my code so far, and let's see, let's see what's going on. He did a data icon here. Thank you. 
So anyone else need a little help? So I said get I get I can't pass, right? This will be the text. I, I believe then it will put it to the right side. And then we can just take on and so it's right back. Yeah, that's just the that's just the concept of um, I don't even know how to describe it because that's sort of like if I tell my mother, scroll down, and she goes the opposite. Because I'm thinking, you know, you're scrolling the scroll wheel down, but she's thinking moving the screen up. So though now I understand what you're saying about which way to put it. Because when I look at that angle to the left, it makes me think move that back to the left. And I see how you're saying on the right, put it on the right so it goes straight back. Yeah.
All right, everyone, so that seemed to have worked. That's cool. Looking at the documentation, remember, we can have a couple of options. Attention, everyone, please. So we can have other options as well. We can have different uh, types of reveals. Right now, we, we've got the default reveal, which gives us the effect that when you do that, the screen scrolls over and it reveals. And remember, we've also got that other one that I kind of like, the, the overlay. I want that to happen, that I move my mouse, I click it, and then the panel moves on top of everything. So to go back to that page, it said that, that one is overlay. Specify di data display overlay for the panel to appear on top of the page. And that gets added to the display mode of the panel is set by data display. The value of the attribute defaults to reveal. Uh, I guess that means that we add it to the page itself. So I'm going to try that. Data display overlay. So let's see. That is on line 77. Uh, We've got data role panel, ID art cal. I'm going to add right after data role panel, because as I said, I like to leave the ID the last thing. Data dash display overlay. So this should change the behavior of the panel now that it goes on top of the existing content. It gives you that effect, that it goes on top of the existing content. Whereas if we don't add anything, it's reveal, where the top content moves over to reveal the content below. And then there's a third type of reveal, which I don't quite like, but that one is that everything moves over. Let's see if that works. Data display overlay. See that? data display overlay. And then here we can add our content. All right, so let's add a little bit of content to this screen so that it doesn't look so empty. Nothing too fancy. Just gonna make some stuff up here. October. I'm going to make a bullet point list. Just something very simple. Uh, I've got uh, H1 October with a bullet point list. I'm going to have three items there, list items. And then November, two bullet points. And just make something up.
two bits in October with H1 and November is H2, then the two months will be different sizes? That's right. I made them look, I'm, I'm making them different like this because the next upcoming, the most upcoming uh, month is October. I want it to stand out. I want it to be number one. And then the next events that are coming are going to be a little bit smaller because they're still a little ways away. Then when, uh, then when November is here, I'm going to make November H1 and then December H2. So just filling in some content doesn't really matter. I just want to fill up that panel to see how it looks. I suppose the documentation says what happens if that content is, is, is longer than the containing screen. Probably we'll get some sort of scroll bars in the web browser, or if it's on a mobile device, well, it has the ability to tap and scroll. So that's what I added. Well, like everything else, we can redefine the look of, of any of any tags, but it seems that the default in jQuery Mobile is what we're seeing here, that uh, an H1 tag looks like this, and an H2 tag looks like that. Very blue. Does that perhaps have to do with what other... Are you using my colors or are you using yours? Yeah. So that's what I'm seeing here. This is an H2 on these screens, and when I load this, it's continuing that style. But it looks different because this panel seems to be more of a white, white. And then the one we did here was a sort of like gray, uh, white-ish. Well, one last thing, then we'll take a break. I would like an icon on my art calendar button, and perhaps to also change its size we have a calendar icon built into jQuery mobile. Might as well take advantage of it. So we'll go back to the line where we've got our art calendar button. We'll make it inline so it doesn't take up all that space and give it a that nice art button. Uh, calendar button. Uh, line 157, back to 157. Uh, we're gonna say uh, okay, data roll button, data inline true this is line 157, data inline true, and then data icon calendar. So now when we go to the art screen, we've got an inline button so that it doesn't take up all of the space, and we've got a calendar and a panel.
So it's 7.10, let's take a break, and we'll be back at 7.20. Be with you one moment. 